Um, uh, can I first of all thank Nesta for inviting me to, to launch the Big Green Challenge for London and the South East. I think it's a really exciting project actually and it feels a, a huge privilege for me to be a part of this and to take, take part at the, the first step. But there's a real danger when we listen to the stories about the gloom and doom and how bad the problem is and how huge it is, that our response to that is to feel helpless and to think, actually, there's nothing I can do, and will it really make a lot of difference if I turn that light off, or if I change that light bulb to a low-energy light bulb, if I, you know, if I turn the tap off and preserve a bit of water, will it make any difference? And the problem is, actually, to meet that challenge, individuals have to play their part as well. And you know, one of the greatest strengths is when those individuals get together and share ideas, we know Britain's an incredibly innovative country. There are lots and lots of ideas out there. It's not just, you know, as Helen said, for academics and businesses and government to come up with the ideas. There are lots of ideas out there, lots of community groups who are pioneering new ways of thinking. So what this challenge is all about is making sure that those ideas come to the fore. I think it's a really good example of what Nesta do well, of kind of like pump priming, capacity building. They're sticking a bit of money in. Well, actually, quite a lot of money, to be honest. <laughs> it's really rather a lot of money. Um, and so trying to bring out all the ideas that we know are there already and encourage people to get talking and to work together. And I think there's a real opportunity here to make a difference. So what I hope you will all do when this is over is to go back out to your organizations, to go back and talk with your friends, um, to pass it on to other organizations that you work with and say, well, hey, shall we have a go? You know, maybe in London we can win this challenge. Maybe it'll be a, a London winner. You know, there's lots and lots of great work that's going on. And so the challenge is for you and for us, for all of us, to play our part. So I suppose I have to say I formally launched the Big Green Challenge <laughs> in London, the South East. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Mark Walton. I'm the head of the Avery Action Counts programme, which aims to support voluntary and community organisations to become more sustainable. Um, I'm excited by the Big Green Challenge because hopefully the chance of a, a million pound prize is going to bring out all of the innovation that we know exists um, in community groups across the UK to help to tackle the issue of climate change. Susan, if I could hand over to you please, thanks. So I represent Hyde Farm Climate Action Network, which can be abbreviated to Hyde Farm CAN, which we think is a very positive message. We were founded in July 2007 by a small group of residents who wanted to do more to reduce their impact on the environment and recognise that working with others is going to be easier than going it alone. We currently have 70 households in our network, um, which is in Balham, South London. 25 households are working on a project called Echo Action, which is aiming to reduce CO2 emissions from their homes by 20, 10 to 20% a year, over a year. Yeah, we put a strong emphasis on socialising. We need to make it fun. Draft proofing is not the most exciting thing to talk about to your neighbours. <coughs> so we have this little mo motto, to be a network, we have to network. Uh, we've come up with some innovative ways of doing this that we think are also practical ways of taking action. So we have um, energy evenings. Um, this means getting together with some friends in a house with a glass of wine. We've got a game that we've made up lots of chat, it doesn't take much to get a con conversation going. Um, fruit, pe fruit picking in people's back gardens, um, it's alarming how many apples and plums, things like that, go to waste in back gardens because the owner of the garden just doesn't have the resources to pick them at the right time. So now fruit pickers are just an email away and it's a fun activity that families can do together for example. And the community food growing network, because we're growing food in front gardens, um, it gets people out in their front gardens and talking to one another. They see more people because they're out the front. Of the, out the front, they can compare the size of their carrots over the garden hedge. <laughs> so, because we've got this uh, loose network structure, it's allowing us to develop lots of little projects like this. So, where to now? Well, what we've achieved so far is, is definitely a first step, but we have started to get people to take action by inspiring them, as well as by providing practical advice. Uh, that makes it easier for them to take action. 
And there's a lot more we can do in this vein. We've got lots of ideas. And also, we recognise that um, what we have now is very sustainable. It's very easy to phone up the bar and say, can we do another film? But at the same time, you know, when we initially set this up, we were talking about bulk buying solar panels and looking, even looking into a community energy network, some kind of decentralised energy or community heating network. And we don't want to lose sight of that either. So I think probably an opportunity like the Big Green Challenge could help us to focus and consider some possible next steps. Thank you, Susan. I think I have a whole different view of what goes on in Ballam than that. <laughs> um, but it's really nice to see that you actually that something like the Big Green Challenge could help you to focus on what you want to do next. So that's that's really good to hear. <laughs> I'm Ian Curtis from the Oxford Climate Exchange. And the thing that really excites me about the Big Green Challenge is, is bringing communities together. Uh, what we've found in Oxfordshire, uh, across all the communities we're working with, is actually they're almost saying, forget the climate change, it's the fact that we're coming together as communities and just having fun, we're talking to each other. That we, uh, we always used to recognise each other, now we're actually talking to each other. We're having parties, we're going out for a drink, and we're saving the planet. And it's just fantastic fun. Um, Vicky, do you want to say a few words about the sort of practicalities of getting involved? Absolutely. I'll tell you a little bit about the way it runs and about the criteria. The criteria is the bit that you really need to listen to and take away. Um, so firstly, just to run through, the challenge um, runs over two years and runs in three stages. So the first stage is about um, collecting initial applications. Um, those applications are going to be quite light touch. It's really just about telling us what your ideas are. The application form will go live at the beginning of January and the deadline is the 29th of February, date for the diary. Um, stage two will be selecting up to 100 groups who will be, asking to inv um, will be inviting to put together detailed proposals and we'll be working with um, our partner Unlimited, we've got a couple of guys from Unlimited here today, who are going to be at the end of the phone advising um, groups on how to develop their idea into a plan. From those up to 100, depending on how brilliant the ideas are, um, we'll be selecting up to 10 finalists who will be implementing their ideas from October next year, 08, to October 09. So just to talk you through the criteria, the five criteria we're going to be assessing um, all of the applications and then later the finalists again. So at the application stage, we're looking for potential against each of these and then the finalists we're looking for a demonstration that the idea actually works and that can deliver against each of these criteria. So the first one is actually achieving measurable levels of car, um, CO2 redu um, emissions reductions. Um, the second criteria is about being innovative. Um, they don't necessarily have to be brand new ideas. We're looking for new ideas or new and better ways of delivering existing ideas, maybe putting a number of ideas together in a new way. The next criteria is about what happens beyond the Big Green Challenge. We're not looking for kind of one-hit wonders. We're looking for things that can be sustained, that can be durable, that can last beyond the life of this, <coughs> this initiative. The next is about scale. We're looking for projects that other people can take up. We're not just looking for something that works only in a very, very specific context. The best ideas will be the ones that are so simple. They'll be the, why didn't we think of that? We could take that up. And they can, be, they can be grown, they can be replicated across the UK. And then the final um, and important um, criteria is about involving the community that you're working with. So the applications will be led by a group of people, by an organisation. But actually, this is the most successful ideas are going to be the ones that um, involve the community in the development of the idea and in the implementation of the idea. For us, this isn't also just about the winners. This is really about building a sense that um, the potential for innovating in response to a major social issue is, is massive in the UK and actually we can, we can all contribute towards that. And so the, the journey that, that all of the competitors take and all of the ideas that come out, we really want to be showcasing them and kind of proving what potential that there is in the UK. Thank you, Vicky. Okay.